25 minutes past six is the time. So in about 35 minutes, we'll find out whether the UK has come out of recession. Katie's taking a look at that and what it might mean. So I suppose we need the definition of recession. We need to know how, how it feels as well. What, how does it affect us, even if we do come out of recession? Well, yes, yeah, so it's about seven o'clock, as you say, that the Office for National Statistics will give us that number. Uh, the latest figure for GDP, now that means gross domestic product. It's a measure of all the economic activity going on in the country. In other words, we'll find out whether the economy is now growing again and by how much. So why does that matter? Well, Professor of Economics Laura Coroneo can explain. Having a growing economy means that the government can have big revenues on which they can rely in order to invest or, or to, to spend in public services or to cut taxes. But if the economy doesn't grow, then you don't have this possibility and then you have the weight of debt that increases. So let's look at the figures we've got showing the story recently. Last summer, the economy shrank slightly, a trend that then continued for the rest of the year. Now, two consecutive quarters of that negative growth meant the UK was tipped into a recession, albeit a shallow one. Now, this year, there have already been signs of an improvement. Monthly figures show the economy grew by 0.2% across December to February, compared to the previous three months. And February's growth was driven by manufacturing, things like car production, and food and drink, while construction was among the areas which shrank. Even if we do officially come out of recession today, experts don't think the economy has headed straight into the fast lane. Analysts expect growth to be modest. The Governor of the Bank of England gave his view yesterday with a tone of cautious optimism. All the evidence we see is that you know, we have turned a corner from that. I don't, however, want to sort of portray it as a strong recovery. I mean, that isn't well, not what we're seeing, but we are now seeing a recovery and we seem to have turned a corner, yes. So I'll be bringing you those latest figures as soon as we have them, just after seven, and we'll see if the UK economy has indeed turned the corner, as the Governor of the Bank of England has suggested. OK, I know that's a very busy time because you have to figure it out, bang on and just see. It's, it's the, the amount of how much it's come out of recession, if, obviously, that's the, a really good indicator as well. Good morning, it's Friday the 10th of May. Our main story this morning in the last few minutes is being confirmed. The UK is no longer in recession. Figures released by the Office for National Statistics show that the economy grew by 0.6% in the first three months of this year. Our economics correspondent Andy Verity has more. At this butcher on the Gloucester Road in Bristol, business is ticking along but hardly roaring away. After the soaring price rises of just over a year ago, some customers are now seeing wages rise faster than prices. And the price of meat or cheese and eggs has fallen, allowing some of them to buy more. But even in this prosperous part of town, they're still very cautious. We find a lot of our customers tend to come in most days and buy a little bit of something that's fresh that they can use straight away and they're not wasting things. Whereas before, people would buy a lot at the end of a week, stick it in their freezer, and then people put things in their freezer and it stays there. So at the moment, I think people are a little bit more conscious of buying and using and not having any waste. The economy is no longer in a slump, but economists forecast that it will grow by less than 1% this year compared to last. That's far lower than before the 2008 financial crisis, and it's a lot to do with chronically weak investment. Public investment in the post-war era used to be between 4 and 5%. Now it's dropped to somewhere between one and a half and two percent per year. And private investment too has been persistently weak. You need a long-term, credible, coherent plan for spending, for tax and for public investment on the basis of which and on the back of which private businesses can then commit to their investment. And the point of our policy is this. Policy is supposed to help us absorb shocks and create somewhat greater uh, uh, certainty and some measure of stability when actually policy in recent years has just has done just the opposite. It's contributed to uncertainty. One thing holding economic growth back is tax. Whereas cuts to national insurance benefit higher earners, they're more than offset for lower earners by frozen tax bans which don't rise with inflation, so a greater and greater chunk of their income is exposed to higher rates of tax. That tends to mean less spending overall and with it a slower economy. Andy Verity, BBC News. Good morning. It's Friday the 10th of May. It has been confirmed that the UK economy is no longer in recession. Figures released by the Office for National Statistics show that the economy grew by 0.6%. That's in the first three months of this year. Um, Katie, you've had a chance. Well, you've had an hour or so to look at these figures. 
and you can you can crunch the numbers first and then maybe try and give people a sense of what that actually means in terms of everyday life. Exactly that. So the headline figure is 0.6%. That's from the Office of National Statistics. Now, GDP is a measure of the economic activity going on across the country. And that's how much the Office for National Statistics thinks the economy grew in the first three months of the year. Now, it's slightly higher than analysts were expecting. And it does mean that officially the shallow recession we saw late last year has ended. It doesn't mean it was growth across the board, though. Services, that includes things like hospitality, arts and entertainment, were up, probably helped by the early Easter in March. And production, particularly goods manufacturing, was up too. But construction fell by 0.9%. Why does GDP matter? Well, it's a sense of the size and the health of the UK economy. If the economy is growing, it can affect things like the number of jobs available, for example, and mean more revenue for the government. After a sluggish couple of years, these figures show a return to a slightly higher number. If you put aside the pandemic bounce back, it actually looks like the fastest growth in a three-month period since 2019. The Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, said it showed the economy was returning to full health for the first time since the pandemic. But Labour's shadow chancellor, Rachel Reeves, said it was no time for Conservative ministers to be doing a victory lap because working people were still worse off, she said, with prices in the shops and mortgage bills still higher. Naga. Thanks very much. Good morning. It's Friday the 10th of May. Our main story this morning. It's been confirmed the UK is no longer in recession. We know this because of figures released by the Office for National Statistics, which showed that the economy grew by 0.6% in the first three months of this year. Uh, Katie can take a deeper look at this one. Uh, Katie, so you can sort of crunch the numbers for us, that 0.6, and then talk about how that impacts people. Exactly that. So that all-important headline figure is 0.6%. And GDP is a measure of the economic activity going on around the country. So that's how much the Office for National Statistics thinks the economy grew by in the first three months of the year. It is slightly higher than analysts were expecting. And it does mean that officially the shallow recession we saw late last year has ended. It doesn't mean it was growth across the board. Services, so that includes things like hospitality, arts and entertainment, were up, probably helped by the early Easter in March. Production, particularly goods manufacturing, was up too. But construction fell by 0.9%. Why does GDP matter? Well, it's a sense of the size and the health of the UK economy. And if the economy is growing, it can affect things like the number of jobs available, for example, and mean more revenue for the government. After a sluggish couple of years, today's figure is a return to a slightly higher number. The Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, said it showed the economy was returning to full health for the first time since the pandemic. But Labour's shadow chancellor, Rachel Reeves, said it was no time for Conservative ministers to be doing a victory lap because working people were still worse off, with prices in the shops and mortgage bills still higher.